In the last part of his paper, Azim Nanki talks about the famous Sufi story known as the Conference, the Conference of the Birds. The Conference of the Birds. And this is actually a story that was written by a Sufi poet. Um, his name was uh, Attar, I should be afraid, Azim Attar. Sufi poet named Attar. And it was actually written in the in the 12th century. So it's a fairly old poem, but it's a famous poem in Sufi circles. Now in this story, it's which is an allegory actually, the birds from all parts of the world come together to decide who is to be their king. And they really are grappling with two fundamental questions. The first question is, what does it mean to be a bird as opposed to a specific kind of bird, like a parrot? And the second question they grappled with is, what reference point could they use to determine if they themselves, that these birds are living up to their highest values, their highest standards. Now, the birds in the story do have different opinions about how to pursue answers to some of these questions, and a number of them decide that they should take a journey to search for these answers. And this journey involves going through seven valleys, uh, and basically in, in each of these valleys they are given, uh, or really seven valleys and seven mountains, and at the end of each of those stages, as they, as they pass through one stage of valley and mountain, uh, they're given a partial answer to this kind of fundamental question about, uh, about their identity, All right, really about what it means for them to be birds. And at the final stage, they are going to be bestowed with the final answers, the, the really most profound uh, part of all this. And, and the final answer is going to come to them through a special teacher uh, known as the Cymorg. So when they get to the end of the Seventh Valley, they're going to meet the Cymorg, uh, who is going to basically tell them the, the final answer. It, it's really going to be the, the answer to make everything clear to them. And, and the Cymorg really is a name of a mythical bird, uh, really a king among birds. And I think the closest Western analog to Cymorg would be a phoenix, uh, if that makes any sense to you. Now, along the way to meet the Cymorg and, and some of these birds decide to take this journey. Uh, a number of the birds are unable to complete the journey. Some of them die, some of them make excuses, they drop out for whatever reasons. And by the end, by the end of the journey, when they get to the end of the, the last stage, there are a cohort of 30 birds left. Okay, 30 birds are left. Okay, and at this stage, they basically wait in anticipation. They're, they're kind of waiting to find out what's supposed to happen next. And nothing really happens initially. No teacher comes to visit them and, and it's you know it seems like they've made this entire effort for, for no for no ultimate benefit. And you know after waiting for a while the birds enter this state of contemplation and they come to a very profound realization when they actually see their own reflection in a lake and there's a lake at the seventh stage. And it turns out that in Persian there's a wonderful pun here the word for 30 is actually psi, and the word for bird is merg. Okay, so psi merg actually stands for 30 birds. And what they realize is that, in other words, they realize that this final cohort, this final cohort of 30 birds, that they themselves are the psi merg. All right, and it's interesting because at the end of all of their efforts, they effectively wind up where they started, but with this more profound degree of knowledge. Now, in relating this particular famous Sufi story to this notion of moving beyond the clash of civilizations, Azim Nanji writes, quote, similarly, it is through the discovery of our common shared heritage that we will learn to define our shared humanity. But first, we must undertake the journey we need to reflect and develop a shared vocabulary which is not limited by any civilization. We have the opportunity to investigate not only the human genome, but the map of the human self. That is a difficult journey. It does not happen in any one discipline. It must happen across the university. It will happen in places between all of the disciplines where people are forced to talk to each other about issues that are beyond their own discipline or interests. It is hoped that in this spirit, perhaps it may become clearer to use that while we may still face clashes of civilizations, our journey together will move us beyond the idea of clash to one of harmony. 
a very nice way to end the paper, and I think it really, you know, underscores the point, and it, it, it's nice to relate it back to this famous Sufi story, but really it underscores the point that, you know, we do need to establish a more common vocabulary and that we can get uh, past many of our issues if we are able to, to communicate with each other and really transcend uh, labels of any sort and we can really move beyond clashes and, and really into, into a world where uh, things are more harmonious. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed these videos on the paper Beyond a Clash of Civilizations. I'll continue to make more videos on other topics of a similar nature. Thanks a lot.